Welcome. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve and graph this uh, compound inequality. And now this compound inequality is conjoined by the OR statement. So what I have is negative 14 plus 6n is less than or equal to 9n plus 19, or negative 6n plus 12 is greater than negative 3 minus 11n. So what it means when dealing with the OR is it could be true for one inequality or the other inequality, or really both. So what we're going to do then is we just need to solve each inequality before then, we go, then we'll go into graphing them and see exactly what the solution set's going to look like. So what I like to do when I'm, when I'm solving inequalities, um, I like to always solve for my variable on the left side. The reason being is because I, you know, we always read from left to right. So in reading inequalities, I think it's a lot of times it's easier to kind of understand the inequality when reading it from left to right. You can solve it for the inequality on the right-hand side. You just got to be careful with how you read it and then for, therefore how you're going to graph it. Um, and this one, when solving for it on the left side, will produce a negative, which I don't always like to do because sometimes you forget to flip the sign. But that will be a good teaching point for us to go through. So what we're going to do is let's solve for our variable on the left side in both equations. So the first thing, if I want to isolate my variable on the left side, I need to get everything else off that side. So I'll add 14. Therefore, I'm left with 6n is less than or equal to 9n uh, plus 33. Not 33. All right. Then the next thing is now I need to get all the n's to the other side. So I'll subtract 9n. Therefore, I'm left with a negative 3n is less than or equal to 33. Now, solving for n, I divide by negative 3, and I get n is now greater than or equal to a negative 11. All right, so you just got to remember whenever you divide or multiply by a negative number, you got to flip the sign. A lot of people forget that, so, you know, maybe you, might, you would get the same solution if you solved on the right-hand side. It just would look like this. Um, which sometimes is just a little more difficult, and then you can always flip it at the end. All right, so now let's go, so we have a value here. n has to be greater than or equal to negative 11. Now let's go and solve this, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to solve my variable on the left side. So I'll add, um, again, first thing, let's get everything off this side. So I'll subtract 12. Therefore, I'm left with negative 6n is greater than a negative 15 minus 11n. Then um, I'll get that left, or... Um, I'm sorry, I'll get the n's back on the same side. So now I'll add 11n. And therefore, I'm left with 5n is now greater than negative 15 divided by 5. And I have n is now greater than negative 3. So what you're looking at is you have n is greater than negative 11 or n is greater than negative 3. So in graphing these, all right, let's uh, start with, um, let's start, let's have this be negative, um, let's do negative 10s right here. So that means that'd be negative 11, negative 12, negative 13, um, negative 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, so it says that n can be greater than or equal to negative 11. So I'll, I, since that's greater than or equal to, that's going to be a solid circle. That means... My point is a part of my solution. Then I think of all the numbers. What are all the numbers that are going to be larger than negative 11? Well, that's going to be negative 10 and on to the right as that's going to get more positive. So I can simply create a graph over here. Then it says n has to be greater than negative 3, greater than or equal to. So I have a nice open circle here, and then all the values that are greater than or equal to negative 3 is going to be go in this direction. Now, the statement, it's very important for us to understand the um, compound statement. It says... For our inequality to be true, it has to be true for this inequality or for this inequality. It does not have to be true for both of them, like an and inequality. If this was an and inequality, then the only part where our equations would be true would be where they intersect. But since it's an or statement, it just has to be and true for this statement or this statement. So therefore, we notice that it's true for both one or the other statements, starting at negative 11, and going all the way here, see it's true for this inequality here. Then it's not true on this inequality, but it's true for this one. So we can shade it. And then from here on out, it's true for both of them, which is a part of the or statement. So that's okay, because it could be true for one, the other, or both. So therefore, I can now just kind of eliminate the rest of this. And we notice that it's going to be all the values um, true from negative, 
negative 11, which that's, let's say that's negative 10. Negative 9, negative 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. There you go. 2, 1, 0. Sorry, my, my graphing was a little off. But the solution set is not correct. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.